So let's work a an, this impulse momentum problem. Uh, we're going to stop a vehicle, big SUV, and um, so we've got a 2,200 uh, kilogram SUV. That's about 5,000 pounds. I mean, it's huge. Traveling at 26 meters per second can be stopped in 21 seconds by gently applying the brakes. In 5.5 seconds, in a panic stop, that just means you're slamming on the brakes. Or in 0.22 seconds, if you hit a brick wall. So what average net force is exerted on the SUV in each of these three stops? So, uh, and we want to use uh, the impulse momentum theorem to do this. So uh, here's what's given. So we've got the, let's draw a little picture. Here's our SUV. Maybe here's a brick wall, I don't know. And uh, so here's my big SUV. It's the new SUV by Lincoln. It's called the Lincoln Compensator. All right, and here we go. And uh, it has a mass of 2,200 kilograms. Uh, it has an initial velocity of 26 meters per second. Now we're going to stop it with three different times. We're going to have a delta t of 21 seconds, a delta t of 5.5 seconds, and a delta t of uh, a point two two seconds. Okay, put the decimal in the right spot. And what are we trying to find? We want to find the average net force needed to stop all these. And we're, we're going to call this the positive x direction, and of course this would be the y direction, but don't really need the y direction in this problem. So first step of the problem, you know, draw a sketch of it, understand what's given, what it is you're trying to find. <clears throat> so in your homework, I would not expect you to have to copy down the problem. A lot of you do that, that's fine. But, uh, but you do need to do this, given, find, and solve with a picture. So let's solve it. Well, if we're going to use impulse momentum to do this, let's write down the impulse momentum theorem. If I apply a net force on an object and multiply it by the amount of time, that will result in a change in momentum of the object. So the net force, or the average net force on an, applied to an object is its change in momentum over the change in time. Well, let's figure out what the change in momentum of this object is. First, delta P is equal to P final minus P initial, right? The final momentum minus the initial momentum. Now, what is the final momentum of my SUV in all three of these cases? Zero. Zero. It's not moving. Now minus, what is my initial momentum? Well, the initial momentum is the mass of my SUV times its initial velocity. And so this is going to be 0 minus the mass is 2,200 kilograms times its velocity is 26 meters per second. So what is this change in momentum? Well, what's 2,200 times 26? Now, 2,200 times 26 is 57,200. Now, what are the units for this? kilograms times meters per second. So 
So this is my, oh, and I forgot the negative. Did you forget the negative when you worked it? I caught my mistake, but it is negative. Now, what does that negative mean? Whenever you have a vector quantity, what does the negative mean? It refers to the direction. Yes, the direction, and it's in the negative direction. So, um, delta P is, uh, is negative 57,200 kilogram meters per second. So now I can figure out the net force by taking this change in momentum and dividing it by the time. Well, let's figure out the first one. Divided by 21 seconds. So, um, and you get negative uh, 2,724. I'm just going to round it off to three significant figures. Now, let's take a look at the units here. Kilogram meters, and then you have a seconds multiplying by seconds, you get a second squared. Does that make sense? Because what is this collection of fundamental units called? Yeah, it's, it, it's a mass times, it's the units of mass times the units of acceleration. So it's a Newton. So we can say that this is negative 2,720 newtons. So that's my first answer. Now let's figure out that, no, that's, that's not too bad. 2,000, I mean, it's, it is an SUV. We're trying to stop here. So for the panic stop, We're going to divide it by 5.5 seconds. Now notice that the amount of time is less. So if you're going to stop something in less time, you need a much greater net force. And in fact, that force will be 10,400. negative 10,000, 400 newtons, if you're going to go in 5.5. Now, that's, that's a lot of force. But finally, if we use the, the well, if you slam into a brick wall, it doesn't take much time to stop. But you still have to change the momentum this amount. But you're going to do that in 0.22 seconds. And it's quite uh, 260,000 newtons. Now, this is this force applied to your SUV is easy. You wouldn't want somebody to push on you on just you that with that much force. That would hurt. But this uh, no. this is causing some stress. You're 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 just about probably skidding on the road. This is catastrophic. You don't want this net force to be applied to your, your car because it will crunch. So these are our, our answers. These are the net forces applied to the car or to the SUV. Any questions? So this is using um, the impulse momentum theorem. 
which is just a, a different way, a, a rearrangement of Newton's second law. And in fact, as I said earlier, Newton's second law really was originally expressed like this, that the net force on an object is really the rate at which the momentum changes. That re does uh, reduce to F equals MA, though, for, for the kinds of problems that we solve. Okay, that is all. <laughs>